Hey guys, James here, Open Road Camper Vans. We're at a Fave, Arkansas. Um, so today we have this X3 that we're gonna install. We're super excited to introduce this and talk about the installation process. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna install it in the 170 behind me. This has a pop top. This is a really cool build. Um, the customer wanted the ability to go to tailgates and kind of be in a situation to where they wouldn't have to connect to power. And one thing with the Nomadic um, is, you know, where you're at, you don't have to be connected and you can run the AC to keep it cool and still have fun. So let's check it out and install this in this new 170. So we have the 14 by 14 template that uh, Nomadic cut out for us. To get this centered, if centered is the ideal position in your van, what we wanna do is, again, this is a 14 by 14. So we'll take a tape on this template and we'll mark seven. And then I'll show you inside of the van, once we get in there, is there is a true center line on the Sprinter vans. Um, it's a little dot basically that's drilled out. And that'll show you where true center is. Um, that way it makes everything a lot more seamless as far as installing the AC. We marked our cardboard template and now we're inside of the van. Is it's gonna fall perfectly here. The reason we're putting the back is because we have an SCA pop top on this particular van. Um, as previously, I marked a line here and also on the trim ring, I marked a line on there as well. What we do is we put these in and the reason we do uh, after the four bolts go in is when this press up against it, it kind of spreads out the force across the entire thing. Um, so here in a second, you kind of see what I'm talking about, but definitely take this trim ring, mark center on this as well, um, just like we did on the template in the previous step and we'll put it up here and kind of mark our holes. We know that it's going right here in the center. We're gonna put this right here and then Buffalo, my trusted assistant is gonna hold that. When you line it up with that center point and you mark it, your cut's gonna be exact. We have it there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mark the ID of this. So the next steps is Buff is gonna grab a drill. We're gonna drill on the insides of that and then we're gonna cut out from the top part the entire perimeter of that to make sure that that fits perfectly. We punched these four holes from the bottom in the previous step and we took a straight edge and marked the exterior of those holes out with a marker. And then now what we're doing is we're putting tape on there. And the main reason is, uh, is to make sure that when you're using a jigsaw, that it doesn't mess up the paint on the top of it. So in this install, we're gonna use a jigsaw um, to make sure that everyone understands uh, more or less how to do the install without the professional tools. We had the hole cut out. Biggest deal now is protecting from the elements. One thing we want to do is uh, make sure there's no burrs. So we're going to grind it, but I need my ears to be protected. So I will make sure that there is ear protection. And then I'm going to grind what has to be ground. After I grind this, I'm going to make sure that is painted correctly. But before that, because most people paint before that, we're gonna make sure it's clean of all debris and all things that will not hold the paint properly. So I need denatured alcohol. And we carry it here at the shop. How are you gonna apply it? Weird. Paper towels. Done. After I do that, we'll paint pin it. See you in a second. What we're going to do now is uh, line this gasket up. Um, one, one thing to make sure that you do so there's no leaks is where this gasket lands on these uh, ridges, <clears throat> again, make sure it's lined up on the interior. 
and then mark it. You can mark with a pencil. I, I would prefer you to mark with a pencil, especially if you haven't done this before. Um, I've done this handful of times, so what I like to do is just kind of score it just a little bit with the knife on both sides. This is the surface we're trying to adhere to, and this is high, so I'm gonna cut out the distance from this point to here, and once I cut that out and add some adhesive to it, it'll fit just flat against it. This is a very thick material, um, so it's really hard to get out with a hand caulking gun. Um, if, if you've got a buddy or you feel the need to buy one of these, I would definitely recommend it because it takes a lot of energy to um, push this stuff out with a traditional style caulking gun. But after that, <clears throat> what you want to do is right here where the gasket meets the roof on the outside, you want to take and put this adhesive sealant all the way around the entire perimeter. And this is just kind of, you know, some extra insurance to make sure that you're never going to have a leak. And also this is where a uh, battery powered caulking gun really comes in handy because if you're using a hand powered, it's going to take a lot more work and you're not going to get as smooth and consistent of a bead. So uh, one of the new things on the X3, um, which we really like, is <clears throat> there's no need to put uh, adhesive sealant in between the gasket and the actual air conditioner. There's a foam base uh, on the air conditioner itself. So it meets up with this and uh, basically has a uh, watertight barrier. So you don't have to worry about uh, putting anything here, especially if you ever have to remove it or change it years later. Um, you're not trying to pull this up and then scrape this uh, adhesive sealant off because this stuff here, <clears throat> basically the reason we use this is because it will not come off. Um, it's, it's definitely a permanent situation once it's applied. We have everything sealed pretty good. We got it on the bottom, we got it around the perimeter. I like to use the whole tube. Um, you can't save this stuff, guys, so don't try to put a nail in it. Um, any extra I have, I just kind of start in the front and put a little extra uh, by the ridges just because we, we don't want any leaks. Um, so the next step after this is we are going to be done with this situation and then we're going to install the air conditioner. So I'm gonna get some help. We're gonna bring this up here. Um, this definitely takes two or three people. You can do it with two, um, but you basically want to line up the uh, bolt holes perfectly in the four corners of this gasket. Um, so when we're lowering it down, the person underneath is gonna be kind of guiding it, putting it where we want. And then, uh, you know, once we sit it down, we'll go underneath and talk about how uh, many torque pounds for the bolts and all the electrical connections and everything from that point on. All right, guys, so now we're on the next step. Uh, I've got Buffalo here holding the air conditioner like a champ. Um, this piece that Nomadic sends with it, uh, it's a piece of gasket, but basically it's a stabilizer piece. Um, it's got some, you know, adhesive on it. Uh, what we want to do is, <clears throat> you know, this is the back of the air conditioner. This is the front. We want to take this and just kind of center it in the back, stick it on there. Um, so once this is sitting flat against that gasket, it won't allow it to rock. If it's going to rock, basically, you're going to have, you know, a gap here for uh, water and air to get in. So that's why we put that piece in. Um, and then these four bolts, this is what we're trying to center. This section right here is what's going to go perfectly centered over this uh, 14 by 14 hole that we cut. We feel good about the location um, as far as being square up top, so it looks good here and also being square underneath. Um, everything's seated really good. So now that we got the uh, air conditioner positioned up here and we feel good about it, uh, we're going to throw the shroud on since we're already up here and we feel good about everything looking good. Um, Nomadic sends these um, rubber spacers and there's four of them. They, they go only on the outsides of the air conditioner shroud. Um, so you'll see these little keepers right here. Basically, this will go first, the shroud will go over top, and they're definitely a little tricky to get in, um, but not impossible. Um, so anyways, yeah, once you get the shroud on, spacers in, put those four in, you put the two in the front, two in the back, shroud's on, and then we'll go on the inside and finish it up. We're inside the van now. We got the air conditioner centered. Um, we got it squared off the walls, so 
from the top and the bottom, it all looks good. The next step is uh, getting this to compress against the sealing so that the uh, adhesive sealant does not solidify. Um, so you gotta work somewhat quick on this. You know, definitely take your time, but don't take too much time because then it's gonna solidify and there's gonna be issues with that, uh, making a really good bond against the metal and the foam gasket itself. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do is this trim piece is gonna go up first. This is gonna go against it. And then our bolt here, we already pre-thread the um, nut on it all the way to the back facing the same direction um, so that when we take this trim ring, we put it up against the ceiling, again, centered on that uh, 14 by 14 hole. The interior of this trim ring should be identical to the cutout that you have on the ceiling. Um, I'm gonna have a buffalo hold this real quick. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this spreader bar and we're gonna put it up against the trim ring, take our bolt through the trim ring into the threaded inserts. And you'll see those on the air conditioner themselves, they're brass threaded inserts. So what we wanna do, and this is very important to understand this, is you only hand tighten the bolt itself. Once you get all these hand tightened, um, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take uh, your wrench and tighten these nuts up against the spreader bar. It's very important to understand that these need four pounds of torque, so it's very, very small. So basically, you're gonna tighten until it feels good, nice and snug, and then you're gonna give it one more good turn. So if you have a torque wrench, I know most people don't, um, I would definitely recommend understanding what four pounds of torque is. It's not very much. Um, it, it's just literally enough to can press the gasket up against the roof and to see that adhesive sealant kind of spill out just a little bit to where there's a really good bond. Uh, the next step is we're gonna take a 13 millimeter um, ratchet and we're gonna take it until it gets, you know, more or less hand tight, like not very hard. And then once we get there, we're gonna do about a full turn um, on every one of them. Again, this is four pounds. Uh, foot pounds of pressure This isn't something that's like you're you're kind of putting everything into it. This is very simply just to pull that down It's already mated um, with the uh, Adhesive sealant to the foam and also the ceiling, but it's just to make sure that's compressed and it gets rid of any air gaps um, One thing you can do Once we get all these tight as you can kind of look around the perimeter on the inside I can see everything and just see that you have like a little bit of spill out everywhere um, that you can see no light on the inside If it helps someone going up a flashlight and going around the perimeter Whatever it takes, you know that that's fine. So as I'm going around tightening these uh, one thing to note is When I tighten this one, this one's gonna loosen up So you want to make sure that you have even four pounds of pressure around the whole thing So it's kind of like putting a wheel on a car. So if I tighten this one up I'm gonna go to this one. I'm kind of work my way around and make sure that everything has equal pressure across the uh, each individual bolt. So we went ahead and ran the uh, two AWG wires through the wall. Nomadic does provide uh, a whole wiring kit. It's protected um, with some TechFlex, which is necessary inside the walls. You want to make sure that it is, in fact, loom with protection. Um, if not, you know, friction's going to be an issue. It's going to rub and brawl, and then you're going to have problems in the future. So this one, <clears throat> we went ahead and put the connection on. Um, and this is just a quick connect to tie in. Makes it super convenient for you guys. Um, don't have to worry about doing like a splice. What we're gonna do, we're gonna start one at a time. We're gonna pull that jacket off. We're gonna take um, this connection and run it over top of it. Um, you know, you might have to pull off some of the tape or move some of the loom back to get it as, you know, as seated as possible. Um, this is definitely something that you can do before uh, on the ground before the air, before you put the air conditioner on, um, we go ahead and get it in, and then I just have someone help me kind of hold it to where I'm not trying to juggle holding this and the crimpers as well. Um, also, something to note: uh, we do this every day, so we have professional crimpers. There's options out there. You don't have to spend $500 on a pair of crimpers um, to get this connection right. Um, it's just again something we do every day, so we have you know tools that are a little bit more convenient than what you're going to get. Um, for kind of a one or two time use. Um, so I'm gonna have Buffalo uh, hold this here on the negative connection. I've got my crimpers uh, preset 
to what we need. We put that on there, make sure everything's seated good. And I'm gonna take this, put it over top of it, squeeze it down. Because these are long connection, there's a lot of wire going inside of that. I'm gonna do it in two different sections. And then one thing you wanna do is you wanna give it a pull test. You don't wanna just do that and, I thought it came off. <laughs> <clears throat> One thing you want to do is you want to give that a pull test. Um, a lot of people that make a connection and think it's good and give it a little tug and it ends up coming off. So definitely make sure that after you make that connection that you pull on it to make sure that friction, um, movement of the vehicle, you know, keep in mind this, this van's going to move down the road hundreds of thousands of miles, 70 miles an hour, so there's going to be a lot of friction. So we want to make sure that this connection never comes undone and there's a live wire um, exposed in the roof of the van. Cool, so now they have these lined up. Um, basically, I'm going to take this connection. Um, I'm going to push these inside of this. And they'll seat themselves and kind of lock themselves in. So we push those in again with anything. We kind of give it the pull test to make sure that it's seated. Um, it might seem kind of silly, but definitely make sure that negative black or positive red is in the same position. It's, it's indicated as well on the plug itself. Um, and then once you feel good about that, that everything's good, nothing's going to come out. Um, it's obviously as simple as just plugging it in, and we're good to go as far as the electrical connection. So we're at the final stages of the installation of the Nomadic Cooling X3. Um, what I have here is the uh, faceplate. So basically, this is what you're. This is the only thing that you're going to see from the inside of your van. You have a a new and updated uh, LCD control screen, um, which we're super happy about the changes. Um, the buttons here obviously change one degree. Um, 78 degrees, basically you press that and maintain 78 all the time. Um, the inside is the changes that, again, we're super excited about. There's a replaceable filter as far as the intake. Um, and then they provide a plenum uh, that goes into these four vents that actually output the cold air into your van. Um, with this, the next steps are super easy. They're super self-explanatory. Um, but the quick connect is obvious. You've only got one quick connect hanging down that you connect into it. Again, with the X3, they made some really good changes that we're super stoked about. Uh, it's not a guessing game, really, with this. Um, you have a thermistor here, super simple. Um, this one, what you want to do is take a zip tie and some provided... Um, holders that, that have adhesive backing that go against the back of this plate and make sure that's over top of the intake. Um, and what this is doing is when you're using your LCD control screen, it's going to tell you uh, the difference between the uh, air coming in compared to the air going out. There's already a thermistor um, up here. So this one goes up to the top. It plugs in directly right here where the other one uh, is already plugged in. Um, there's also a quick connection um, that just, again, super easy, plugs in, no guessing work involved, take the thermistor that's hanging down. So again, once you get that, you get the ceiling on. Um, the reason I'm not putting this in in the video is because we want to make sure that it's all insulated, protected. Um, it's normally a last step, like a trim out step of the van build process. Um, so once we have this on, it's insulated, this hole's cut out to the desired size. We'll pop this in, plug the few wires in, um, and then we're ready to run our AC. Uh, we're super excited that Nomadic made a new air conditioner. Um, start over. <clears throat> we're super excited to be working with Nomadic on this X3. Um, it's, it's changed a lot since the 2000 and 3000 previously. Um, they do a really good job at kind of listening to feedback and making sure that um, you know, the necessary changes that people requested uh, have been made. So we're excited to continually use them and grow with them as a company. So if you guys have any questions, reach out to Nomadic or us at Open Road Camper Vans, and we'll be happy to help you guys.